Harp, the static web server with built-in pre-processing. Uh, let me show you how this works. So on my desktop, I'm just going to create a new directory. We're going to call it my app. And we'll open this up in Sublime Text. Um, so the next step is we're going to start up the Harp web server. Um, here, I'll just show you. You can pick any port you like. Um, it defaults to port 9000. And we're using Harp 093 for this demo. So just keep that in mind. Now we can just um, put that in the background. We don't need to go to that web server, restart it again. And we'll begin by creating an index.html file. And inside it, hello world. And we've got our hello world in HTML. So nothing special has happened here. Uh, Harp is behaving exactly as you'd expect any other static web server to behave. And you're free to use Harp that way. It um, works well as just a disposable web server for firing up um, any directory, serving any directory um, on the fly. But let me show you what makes Harp a little bit different than other web servers. Um, so for starters, we don't need to use HTML. We can use um, Jade, we could use Markdown, we could use EJS, use whatever you like. So in this case, we're going to go with Markdown, and we'll just change this to Hello World, and add a little bit of content in there. And now we've got um, this Markdown file. So let's create a second file, and we'll call this um, About and we'll use markdown again. And so we've got about and we've got that. And the first thing you might notice with this about page is that there's no extension on this. And that's because uh, Harp assumes that you want to have clean URLs. But you're free to, to reference it as about.html. That's how Harp sees this file. Even though there isn't uh, an HTML file, Harp um, looks for the next best thing, which in this case is, is a markdown file. And it um, compiles it on the fly and serves it without creating any, any files on your file system. So the next logical step when, you, when you're building a web application would be that you want to have like a shared layout. So Harp has this, con this convention for doing that, which is a file called layout dot, um, well, it can be dot anything really, um, other than markdown in this case, which for reasons I won't get into. But um, in this case, we're going to create uh, a layout, uh, which will say harp demo and we will add horizontal rule and then we're going to yield the output of whatever we're rendering. So now we've got um, an about page and we've got an index page. You're using a shared layout. Now let's add a style sheet into here because it's looking a little ghetto and we will Man, I really need shortcuts, don't I? All right. Um, href, we'll call this main.css file. And we will, it's a type of text slash CSS. And of course, we need to create the main.css file. So in here, we're going to put a bit of padding on our body, maybe uh, 30 pixels, and we'll put in um, we'll font family, family to for Dana. And things are starting to look a little bit nicer. So let's look under the hood here. 
Um, what you'll see is you'll see um, compressed or condensed HTML. And in here, we're referencing our, our style sheet. Uh, this is rendering compiled from the markdown right there. And this layout was created in Jade. So let's take this to the next step. Um, obviously, you know, because Harp gives you pre-processing, it doesn't make a lot of sense to use CSS directly. Um, so we can just simply rename this CSS file to less or to stylus and we will get the pre-processing automatically. So in this case, we're gonna use less. And because less is a superset of CSS, nothing actually needs to change in this file. Um, we can just refresh and it, and it works as normal. Um, but if we view the source, we will see in our main.css file that it does look a little different. And that's because it is being converted from less to CSS and all the white space is being stripped out. But if we, um, if we want to, um, one of the great things about less is, is you have variables so we can go background color is pink and we can reference background color pink. This is really poor naming scheme, sorry, BG color. But I think you get the point. And now the background is pink, and of course that will also apply to our about page, and everything is great. Um, but where you'll find this to be really powerful is when you want to use something like Twitter Bootstrap. So um, let's let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go to getbootstrap.com, which is uh, the Bootstrap website, and we're going to download it. Now, typically when you use Bootstrap, you end up using the compiled CSS of, of what Bootstrap is, and that's, um, in, in most cases, that's the easiest way to get going. Um, but I would encourage you not to do that because it is very restrictive, and if, if you want to override things, it, it's really challenging sometimes to like figure out how Bootstrap did things and override everything. Um, when you're working with the source files directly, it becomes a lot more natural. So we're going to open this up in our finder. And um, if we look at this directory, um, you'll, you'll notice this less directory. And this is all the, the source files. So we're just going to take this and we're going to drop them into our app. And we will rename it to bootstrap. Um, I'm beginning the directory with an underscore to tell harp never to serve anything out of this directory directly. Um, we're just going to reference bootstrap from our last file and create one um, monolithic CSS file with everything in it, including bootstrap and our overrides. So let's do that. Um, it's as easy as going import and Bootstrap, Bootstrap. Um, the reason why I'm referencing Bootstrap, Bootstrap is because the entry point of Bootstrap is this file called Bootstrap, which references everything else. Um, but what we end up getting is one CSS file. Um, let me change this to um, one CSS file. Um, with bootstrap plus our overrides right here. So just to show you that this is actually working, um, I'm going to I'm going to assign the background color to the brand primary, which gets set in bootstrap. And if we refresh here, uh, we have syntax error. I think I do that every time. I need a semicolon there. <laughs> And, and there you have it. So brand primary is blue. Um, we probably also have success, which is green. And you get the idea. And of course, we can override these as well. Um, so if I wanted this to be um, yellow, that works as well. 
Okay. So to give you a picture of what's happening here, now let's look at our CSS file. As you will see, it gives you all the bootstrap. And this is extremely handy and a great way to work with bootstrap. So let's say that our application is now complete. Um, the last thing we're going to do, and this is quite important, is you don't want to be running your Harp server in development mode because, you know, Harp's, Harp's doing some things for you and it's very expensive for it to be doing that on every request, which is perfectly fine for development. It's, it's fast enough to make your development experience really smooth. Uh, but um, in production, your, your system is going to get hammered. So we want to start it in production mode and we will um, we'll run it exactly the same harp server um, in production you might want to start on port 80 we will stick with 9000 and it's still running the same way um, but it's in production mode which means that it's not recompiling everything on every request. It has an LRU cache built in to keep things nice and smooth, which your OS will thank you for. Now, one last thing to show you. Um, so we've got our project here, and as you can see, it's kind of, um, you know, we've got all these less files. We've got these MD files, and, and we've got this Jade file, and, and we got a nice little app here going. It was really easy to put together. Um, but let's say that you wanted to deploy to something like GitHub Pages or compile these assets for Apache Cordova. Um, although Harp it doesn't call itself a static uh, site generator, it actually works excellent as a static site generator. Um, I just don't like um, encouraging that behavior unless it's necessary. So let's uh, look at how you would compile. So we can go harp compile and we'll put our output to back one directory called www. And so harp just went ahead and compiled the application. Now when we open it up, we got all the same stuff in my app, but we actually have just the files that are needed. Um, which means that now we can run this behind Nginx or any other like standard web server. And what we have is we got this about page, um, which it's not rendering for us, which is lovely. And we have this main.css. So let's just open this up. Um, thought I could open it that way. Uh, sublime www. And here we got our about page, which is the compiled output, the index page, the compiled output, and our main.css, which is all a bootstrap plus our overrides. It's very clean, and this is extremely handy in a lot of circumstances. So um, in closing, um, go to harpjs.com, check it out. Uh, there's instructions on how to install and um, get started and some good documentation to get you going. Harp can do a lot of powerful things for you. This is just like scratching the surface, but I hope you will find it as useful as, as I do. So thank you, and I'm happy to hear your feedback and look forward to it. Thank you, bye.